This is Resilient Skills for a Stressed Out Generation. And today I'm going to tell you the six building blocks for life. We are living through some really tough times. I say that we have a 1.0 system that is trying to deal with 5.0 problems. The building blocks for life are something that I want you to think of as like a bill of rights. They are six things that we all need in order to build a more resilient you. One, they help you prepare for stressful times. Two, they help you respond in a healthy way, in an empowering way when things are happening. And finally, number three, they help you to recover after something has happened that feels really traumatic. And each one of the building blocks is something that you're going to tailor for yourself personally. What is it that you need? The first building block is called protection. We need safety and protection to avoid our nervous system going off on full alarm constantly. That's pretty obvious, but we also need more than that. We need to feel we're planning for safety and protection. We need to know when something threatening, fearful, or traumatic happens, we're ready. It's also true that in order to recover from a stressful event or extreme adversity, we need safety and comfort in order to process what has happened. Building block number two is relationships. Even if we consider ourselves a loner, we still need the help of others. We say it is important to establish at least one caring relationship, someone that we at Bounce Back Generation call your in case of emergency person. That's someone you can call on when something emotionally distressing happens and you can reach out to if you have a physical emergency. This may not be the same person. Creating connections that we can count on often requires that we are intentional with our relationships. This is about establishing authentic connections, and that is not always easy. Bounce Back Generation has a podcast with an expert on relationships, which is a really good way to start thinking about how do you develop those kinds of authentic relationships. You can see how relationships can help you prepare for, respond to, and recover from a traumatic event by knowing you have someone there for you, knowing in the middle of your crisis you can reach out, and that someone will be there to help you recover. And you know whether you can provide the same for others or not. Building block number three is coping skills. Now, coping skills is something a lot of people talk about, but we never really teach how to do coping skills. So a lot of us learn by watching our parents or our peers and looking at what is it that they do in order to cope. And we may have picked up some bad habits. We may think that, for example, having a cocktail or yelling at someone is a good way to kind of unload negative feelings. But we also know that those things can have negative consequences too. The test that we have is, does it make you feel good today and just as good or even better tomorrow? That's how you know you've picked a coping skill that's a really positive, healthy one that's going to support you instead of deplete you. You will need to establish your own coping skills unique to your personality. Maybe what relaxes you is to work with your hands so you knit when you get stressed. Perhaps you're more physical and playing basketball releases pent-up tension. Or you do something creative like cooking or painting, or you need to put your headphones on and call a friend. One of the important things that we learned in the previous video is that when we have that fight, flight, freeze, fawn, faint response, we feel it in our body. So a lot of coping skills may require that you move your body in some way so that you move that tension out of your body. On our YouTube channel, you'll find videos we call our hashtag feelgood15. They are tips from people who have developed different ways to try and change the mood in 15 seconds. But what do you do when the screens turn off? block number four is about confidence. We all need to feel that we have agency in the world. That means that when you try to do something, it has impact. But we can hold back because we're afraid of failure or the impact will not be felt by others or we will be misinterpreted or misunderstood. The methodology that we use to build confidence is a little bit unique. What we say is that in order to build confidence, you have to build in 
a sense of failure. You have to allow yourself to fail. You need to fail with style, with the self-forgiveness, and with the feeling like, hey, I'm working on something here. And disregard what others say or think. The path to success almost always runs through a forest of failure. And we're saying you should embrace that and make failure part of the normal process of getting good at something. Building block number five is about our need to belong. While we need one special person in our lives, we also need to feel we belong to a group. Somewhere we're accepted for who we are. This need is part of one of our ancestors' relics, where we lived in tribes and we needed to know who was in our tribe and who wasn't. This is not only normal, to want to belong. It's a huge part of our society today where we have celebrity culture, cliques, and groups that seem to be above it all and keep others out. I'm Instagram famous, boo. We need to find a place where people like us share the same identity and accept us for who we are. There are many opportunities to belong and just knowing that you belong can be a great help. However, there can be a dark side to belonging. And we have a podcast with an expert on inclusivity and belonging, and he talks about that dark side. Belonging is so important because in our society today, things can be in flux. One day you're part of a group at work and the next there are layoffs, or you can be part of a group at school and summer vacation leaves you feeling isolated. But belonging and having that group with you is really important to plan for what you're going to do if something catastrophic happens or there's an emergency or you need that kind of support for some reason. It can help you respond by knowing what to do or who to call or where to gather. And it can help you recover to have other people who have gone through what you've gone through. The final building block is called storytelling. It's about owning your life story. And you create a way to talk about the things that have happened to you. For many of us, we have secrets about traumatic things, or we don't know how to tell people about those moments that shaped who we are and why we are where we are today. Storytelling is about finding ways to create a chronological narrative of your life story and finding meaning in the things that you've been through. We say at Bounce Back Generation that if you don't own your story, someone else is going to, and they're going to tell your life story instead of you. And one of the tools that we have is a hero's journey template. You can find the hero's journey template on our website, bbgtv.org. Now that you have all the tools, you can begin to create your own personalized toolbox. How would you do this? have a lightning bolt on our logo is because resilience is personal power. Again, we are a nonprofit. When you engage with us through liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing, you are allowing us to continue to offer what we do for free. And thanks for watching.